Here at TWRS, we're always here to help our squad when they need a little push in the right direction. That's just who we are. We're a beautifully diverse group of goofballs dedicated to driving fake race cars as fast as possible. And we continue to push each other to the front using the power of nonsense. We have one of the strongest NASCAR programs on the service, and you can access it all for $24.99 a month. And we just released individual subscriptions for $14.99 a month for each NASCAR vehicle. We also just added a Rallycross program, and our IndyCar program is taking off as well. So come join the weird side. We have speed and cookies. Cookies are not included in some locations. Live from Japan, good welcome race fans, one and all, back to Green Flag TV. This afternoon, we get set to duke it out once again on what was going to be a Sunday night for the ASRL Next Gen Cup Series, what will now be a live day broadcast on Tuesday or Wednesday night. My name is Ola Ramble, alongside Josh Baird. We are bringing you all of racing action from start to finish of this series here this afternoon. Josh, it is going to be an absolutely phenomenal drive for everybody here this afternoon, and I cannot wait to see who's going to come out on top at the end of this one. This is going to no doubt be a race to remember this afternoon from Mobility Resort Motegi. Yeah, Nolan, I totally agree. The cool thing is about this track is it's such a unique and iconic layout and never have the next-gen cup cars uh, come to this track. And this will be the first time I'm going to get to see this as well. So the unique layout of the track with the turns one and two significantly different from turns three and four should make for an interesting uh, race here tonight. It very much is. Uh, I've heard this track described a lot of ways. I've heard it compared to Darlington. I've heard it compared to Gateway. I think the best way to describe it is this. This is the track if Gateway and Darlington had a son, right? I mean, this is what that track would very much be. So there's a lot to play for here this afternoon. A lot of drivers trying to see who could get themselves up on top of pole position here uh, on this beautiful uh, afternoon of racing. 160 laps, 250 miles going to get set to kick off around this facility. It is an absolute whale of a time at a track like this. And you know for a fact that a lot of these drivers, they're going to be in for some serious fun here this afternoon on what should be a wild qualifying session and a wild race session later on. 250 miles underway. They did increase the race lengths a lot for this season. I heard that the general consensus, either 250 laps or miles, whichever comes first. That's going to add a whole new dynamic to this track. It's going to make it a lot more fun for these guys to try and stretch that out and uh, make it more competitive. And, you know, last week was at uh, Southern National Speedway or Motorsports Park, rather. So a different dynamic, and the cool thing is about the ASRL guys is they really try and add as much dynamic uh, track uh, diversity as they possibly can just to try and make that experience a difficult one and not shoehorn their uh, a driver that's, uh, you know, got very niche level of skills. So the dynamic uh, aspect of this track is just going to make it so that uh, these guys are going to have a great time tonight. Johnny Hamby enters this race in the points lead, 12 clear of Tommy Cook. It's another two back there to match Schlosser. And then, of course, Joshua Higgy, Kyle Zittle, Joshua Rutherford, Luke Peterson, Michael Milfeld Jr., Paul Ellison, and Corey Rutherford round out right now a ten, uh, the 10 cars uh, for the top 10. And, of course, that comes after a wild race at Southern National Motorsports Park. Lots of attrition. Two cars ended up going over in the exact same wreck at that track as well. So I think it's safe to say that for these drivers, they're going to have their work cut out for them tonight. You go from the fastest and longest speedway on the calendar down to the shortest. And now, well, one perfectly smack dab in the middle and one that should provide lots of opportunities for strategy to pan out and for green flag runs. So qualifying is complete. Let's take a rundown of what your starting grid is going to look like as we get set to duke it out around Mobility Resort Motegi. Started on pole position, you, of course, have Brody Gunter for 510 Racing alongside Mick Milfeld Jr. Hayden Palumbo starts at the number three spot with Matt Schlosser in fourth. Corey Rutherford is down to the number five spot with Tommy Cook down in sixth. Paul Ellison is seventh with Joshua Rutherford in eighth. 
Josh Mahiki is ninth, and Johnny Hamby rounds out the top 10. 11th is going to be Nate Morris, and 12th is going to be Selena Thompson. 13th will be Joe uh, Alberico, and uh, 14th will be Matt Williamson. 15th, Renee Garcia. 16th is Luke Peterson. 17th is Gerald Williams. 18th is Alex Howard. Then 19th will be Rob Williams. 20th will be Casey Campbell. 21st is going to be Carson George. Carson George, the lone driver, not putting it down to qualifying lap, entering racing action here this afternoon. So just waiting now with the last two drivers to grid on up. Of course, you got Brody Gunter. Uh, we're still waiting on your full set of the grid on up. Palumbo just gridded in. Paul Ellison waiting on him along with Rene Garcia. A few new names coming into the season. Hayden Palumbo, a driver that we have not seen on the track so far uh, all season long. So uh, there's a few names here that are going to be looking to get some new ones. Uh, one driver I'm curious to see, though, Selena Thompson, currently running uh, with the Orlando Outlaws. Uh, she is a driver that has been a longtime runner with the GNGG IAL Truck Series, kind of on and off throughout its years. And uh, she's proven that she could be a quick driver there. I'm very curious to see what she'll be able to do to Next Gen Machinery this afternoon. Yeah, seeing Selena in that uh, position in the other series, I've seen a couple of her races as well, and she does really decent. Uh, in that series so i imagine that she is going to do great here as well you know and looking at the rest of the grid there's a lot of very familiar names in the asrl next gen cup series uh that are looking to cement themselves up towards the top again i'm looking at like matt slosher uh joshua Higi last year did uh did outstanding in the season uh, towards season's end there so a lot of those guys coming back to try and once again prove themselves to be the top runners in this league Josh Mahiki still trying to see if he can find himself in with some good luck here in the season. It's been a bit of a rocky start so far, but hey, he's got some two top tens under his belt. So still winless, but there's a good chance for him to get it done here this afternoon if he can fight his way up from a midfield starting position. But for now, the Irish and Pace car going to lead this field through turn numbers three and four. We are happy as always that you are joining us here for more racing action. The ASRL Next Gen Cup Series. The pace car is down and in, into the restart zone. Green flags out. We're underway in Japan. Couple of drivers sliding into the wall early on, but for now, everybody is clean and green as we work around the top side of turn numbers uh, three and four. And everybody now on a solid launch as you, they, uh, you see these drivers taken off in the midst of that run down the front stretch and back into turn number one. Gunter leading the way. Yeah, Palumbo sliding into second place. Milfelt Jr. right behind him. He's looking to possibly get a stab here going into turns three and four. And a little further down the track, we got three wide going into the corner as we got Schlosser looking down to the inside of the five of Rutherford. And that's yeah, starting to stack up a pile right behind him as we get more action underway here at Motegi. Oh, oh, one. One into the wall. Joshua Rutherford slams into the fence. And that is going to bring out the caution flag for the first time this afternoon. So first yellow flag on the day and only at the end of Latin number two, Joshua Rutherford though with a hard hit into the outside wall right out of the gate. You see how much that right front wheel is just tore up on that 64 car. If you can see that thing shaking around, that could be a game ender for Rutherford you don't have a fast repair to save you anymore in this series. Yeah, losing that fast repair is going to be uh, absolutely trouble for him as he has to go down and take up those repairs. Uh, turn four at Motegi is one of the toughest corners here. Look at him getting tight back into the wall. He cannot turn that car at all because of that front wheel damage. So uh, I think it's going to be a lot of costly repairs for him, and he's going to be starting off on his back foot. So coming around through turn numbers three and four. And just looked like Rutherford got a little bit loose. Selena Thompson got up in there as well and just 
slammed that 64 car hard into the outside wall. And Thompson as well with a huge ton of damage right off the gate. Right on board with Selena Thompson as she took that run down to the turn numbers three and four right behind the work in progress. Number 64, yeah, just got loose. Nothing either driver could have done for that situation once that 64 broke around. And a hard hit into the outside wall will spell a lot of damage for these drivers uh, as they get set to take it back to the racetrack at the end of caution number one. Sofield already getting set to go back to green flag racing at the tail end of lap number six, headed in for seven. Brody Gunter still leads from Hayden Palumbo. Nick Milfell Jr. obviously uh, running in third. Schlosser fourth, Cook fifth, and Joshua Hege rounds out the top six. Joshua Hege making a lot of moves early on. That three wide move down the backstretch, I think shows that that 099 was not 100% solid in qualifying, and he could very well be a threat for the win here this afternoon. Yeah, Joshua Higgy up three positions already, so must have been a bad run for qualifying. Another guy I see, too, is Rene Garcia up seven spots as well. So using that caution to get an advantage to gain a couple more spots, let's see what they can do when the green flag drops here. Well, the lights are out aboard the iRacing pace car, the Mullet Music Productions number 01 Mustang of Brody Gunter going to work his way around through turn numbers three and four. And as the iRacing pace car pulls down into pit road, we'll work our way back to the restart zone. Will there be another quick yellow? Will we get a green flag run? Green flag back in the air as Gunter takes it away. Large jump by Gunter coming down with the green flag here, leaving Palumbo and Milfeld Jr. to duke it out a little further back. They're side by side going through turns one and two. And just a little further behind them, it looks like there's another side-by-side -side battle going on. But uh, at this track, I think we're going to see a little more single-file racing just with the nature of the, the turns here. But uh, right now, Milfeld Jr. and Palumbo giving it a really nice run for their money going through three and four. And yeah, Milfeld currently fighting it down on the inside line. Uh, well, the outside line, sorry. Palumbo trying to work it down uh, from that outside lane as well. Battle for second still on. And all this has allowed for Brody Gunter to pull out a gap of already almost seven tenths of a second. That is a huge gap there for uh, Gunter to have pulled out so quickly, so early on. And I think that really sh uh, puts emphasis on just how important it is to try to get single file quickly at a track like this. Yeah, that's going to be key. I think tires are going to be a problem here if you're getting too far away from that line just because of the flat nature of turns three and four compared to turns one and two. And the shorter diameter in nature as well just makes it really tight. So as the tires begin to wear, you might see them slide up a little bit to try and ma maximize their speed with the tire wear. But uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a tough one for these guys to keep it uh, keep battle or the position battles going. Side by side further in the field, Paul Ellison down six, trying to make that only down five though as he battles his way around Luke Peterson on that top shelf. Ellison, of course, uh, starting this race with the top 10. Meanwhile, Luke Peterson trying to battle his way into a top 10. And while this is going on, the fight's picking up again for a second. Hayden Palumbo in his debut down to the inside, trying to see if he can pick off uh, Milfeld Jr. Oh, pinches him in down the front stretch on the run to one. Nice run down into one there. Now going through turns one and two, singling themselves out with Palumbo gaining the advantage. But it looks like Milfeld Jr. Oh, took a little bit higher line coming out of the corner. Didn't quite pay off for him, but he's got a nice momentum run going down the back stretch to possibly get him a chance to sneak into that bumper. And it looks like the 11 car or the one car technically on his on his car here, uh, 11 on the scoreboard. Uh, you slid out wide just a little bit there, and uh, Milfeld Jr. was able to take advantage of that by sneaking to the inside. And now you see Joshua Hickey under some fire as well from Matt Schlosser, your defending champion, way up the hill in turn one. That's going to open up the door for the Interstellar SRV, number 400 Mustang, to get in down on his inside. Schlosser tracking up, but Hickey will maintain that momentum up on the high side of the racetrack. So Hickey hangs on to fourth. And now that's in fact going to cost Schlosser a spot potentially. Here comes Johnny Hamby trying to go around the outside. John Deere number 70. 
Yeah, he and Slosher, two veterans of this circuit or of this league, so they can race each other pretty tightly around this track. Is oh, it looks like the uh, Millfelt Jr. gets up there a little bit, and that gives the opportunity for Higgy to sneak into the inside. Will Slosher also be able to take advantage of that little bit of a mistake by Millfelt, or will he actually look down to the inside of Millfelt going into turn number three? Coming around through three and four, Higgy still hugging that inside line, trying to see if he can't get a move going. Milfelt though, powers through around the top side. Good show there from that 155 to get clear. Even further behind, Nate Morris, Renee Garcia, and Matt Williamson trying to go side by side as well. Matt Williamson uh, taking one to the inside of Nate Morris. We saw a lot of this in the Speed Cup Series race when they came here a couple weeks ago. It is really, really difficult to pass at this racetrack. There's just something about it that makes it almost impossible to execute a pass with the inside lane. That outside line, it can be so powerful on defense to keep drivers behind and allow them to burn their equipment up, but it's equally as powerful on offense because that means the, if you got your opponent on the inside of you, there's not a whole lot they can do to finish you off. Yeah, that's a good point, too. They have to hold a really tight line to maintain that position down to the inside because you have all that track to your right, and they have nothing but car on their right. So that forces them down there, which forces them to uh, slow up a little bit as the tires begin to wear. Millfelt still to the bottom of Higgy trying to make a move. Higgy pulls in line, and Millfelt will keep that one down to the inside. So the battle for third is very much on. And that'll put Milfeld up to the number three spot potentially. He, I think, slipped up a little bit too much coming off of turn number four last time by. Milfeld takes that federated auto parts 155 down and looking to make some good speed. Meanwhile, Carson George into pit road early here. He's got quite a bit of damage, though, on the, on the uh, right front there. Yeah, you can see the camber of that right front just tilting a little more than it probably should be, which means that that hit is going to create some steering damage for him as well. But looking at all these guys, Palumbo, Melfelt Jr., Higi, all these guys battling for position back here has given Brody Gunter a three-second lead over the rest of the field. So those guys need to fall in line. Higi's got the right idea there. Just fall in line and bump your opponent. Try and chase down that leader at this point because it, that battle for that second position is not going to do you any good if that leader is taken away and uh, driving off into the sunset. Right now, Hayden Palumbo has had a good bit of clean air, just hasn't been able to do much with it. Apart from this, one of the only battles that's this close is deeper in the pack with Alex Howland and Rob Williams. They're going side by side down the back stretch and towards turn number three. Howland up top, Williams down low, and now three wide off of turn number four. With Higgy caught in the middle, he'll lose two as Hamby and Schlosser both get around him. Slosher and Higgy looking to the top side of Hamby here. He really had to go low to defend that position on the track. But as those tires wear that top, that higher line is going to start coming more into play here. As we come out of the corner, Hamby still got to run with that lower line. So he might be able to recover this position from Slosher going through three and four. So Johnny Hamby and Matt Schlosser continue to go nose to tail. Joshua Higgy, I can't tell if he's trying to get him behind them or if he's trying to find a way around them. Well, that's going on. Corey Rutherford looking like he may have been having a little bit of problems at the tail end of the field trying to stay in the session. He's gotten those issues stabilized. Now, Selena Thompson, look out. Thompson sliding around to the back straight away, down to the inside, and she's going to pull off a save, and we won't have a caution. We'll keep it green. I was actually just going to mention how uh, impressed I was with her to get back into the top 10 after that last issue with uh, Corey Rutherford. And uh, so I'm surprised that she ran into that issue coming out of two. Usually you see that coming out of turn number four just because of how tight of radius turns three and four are. Um, but a uh, slight mistake for her is going to send her back. But great job of keeping it out of the inside wall and keep it going. Uh, she might have to come down to the pits a little early, though, because those tires are going to be worn out. 
Of course, the fuel numbers still going to play a big question to how the fuel strategy is going to be panning out here this afternoon as well. And you have to wonder how long that fuel is going to be lasting. Of course, you can't really use speed uh, on Thursdays as a good uh, a good benchmark considering their fuel restrictions are different to what ASRL runs in their races. So it does make that a little bit more tricky, but I have a feeling we're going to be seeing these guys in before lap four. Yeah, these guys do put that uh, handicap on the fuel tanks to try and, you know, get a better scale of what's going on in the real life without having to run those full sets of miles. Um, so, yeah, I would be interested to see what lap that is. That'll help tell us the rest of the race on how to prepare for these stops here. But if you're talking 40 laps, that'll break it into nice, even little chunks for the fuel stops for these guys. So that would uh, make it actually a little bit more interesting if there's some more green flag stops because then you can start taking fuel save and strategizing that way. But usually when it's super clean cut into perfect chunks like that, there isn't a ton of, uh, a ton of leeway on what your choice is for going down to pit. That does make it a little bit easier though for drivers. It's one less thing that they're gonna have to worry about is you know, trying to navigate a strange game in the midst of all of this. Oh boy, Rene Garcia up may have just caught the outside wall off of turn four. Matt Williamson to the inside in the tur uh, turn 200, 199. Down low, Garcia try to pull the gap around the outside just behind them, Nate Morris. See what he can do in his number 25 entry. But Garcia trying to hang on, can't do it. And Morris can't go on the offensive either. Yeah, those guys are doing a great job fighting out that battle for the top 10 positions and starting to track down those guys in front of them just a little bit at a time. And we got a little further back. We got uh, Peterson and uh, Joshua Rutherford duking it out for position here in the top 15. Yeah, Luke oh, I'm Pete sorry, Corey, Corey Rutherford. I get those two mixed up sometimes. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I, I feel you on that one. Luke Peterson, though, Hanging on for now from Corey Rutherford. Alex Howland still waiting in the wings. Behind them, Rob Williams letting by Joe Alberico down to the turn number one. So the 83 makes up one more place from the 19. Up the road, Nate Morris attacked Rene Garcia and almost into the left rear quarter panel. Yeah, that was almost a net code possible incident there. It was really close. A great job by him on backing that out to prevent the incident. I'm sure Rene Garcia is happy for that as well as he is saved for another lap. Uh, but it's looking like he's getting a little more quick than Rene is. So he's trying to find that secret spot to sneak in when Rene makes a mistake to try and get that overtake in. It's amazing that we're so much has happened and we're only about to be 25 laps into this race out of 160. This is a really long race for a lot of these drivers. And I mean, we're talking, right, like 37 second laps there, 38 second laps. That's only about 10 seconds shy of what you're hitting at tracks like Talladega or Daytona. This is gonna be one of the longest races based off of time that we're gonna be having all season. This is a pretty long race and this track is definitely a unique one to be running a long race at as its unique layout can provide its own set of difficulties here. But these guys are notorious for keeping it green for the most part, especially when they decided to go away from the uh, faster pair. A lot of green flag running coming from this league. So uh, expect to see, oh, as Nate Morris gets loose up in the marbles towards the top side. Really close call there, nearly found himself going around. That was absolutely tight there with that one. Able to keep himself uh, in line though. So this pack going to continue on as Nate Morris tucks himself into 11th, but now sitting where he started. So could be worse, but you know he's thinking it could be a lot better. Match Losser and Josh Wihigi, the closest battle in terms of uh, battles within three tenths of a second uh, up to the race lead. This is the fight for that number five spot that's still raging strong. Your defending champion has not had much opportunity to go somewhere, though. Throw it to Gunter, though, man. I mean, 4.3 seconds already. This is insane from your race leader here. I mean, you take a look at the track map. You look at just how spread out the whole pack is around this racetrack and how far out Gunter is just from second. 
Yeah, the 19 car here, or 19th place car of Campbell is uh, beginning to see Gunter pop into his mirrors here. And with that aspect, it mean you're talking that uh, that's going to throw a whole new wrench in this game. It may allow the rest of these guys to close up that gap a little bit. But the problem is, is Gunter's, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just incrementally increasing that gap. So I think even if they had another chance to catch him, he's still got to be the driver to beat tonight. You just saw Josh Vick get around match loss over the fifth spot as well. But you talk about the lap times the last little while, and it's unfortunate that we're not really able to uh, get an eye in as to who's where uh, in terms of those lap counts. But we'll try to see if we can get a look in here on this one. I think this might be able to give a relatively good example here of this one. You can see just how much Palumbo starting to really lose touch, right? If he lost over a tenth and a, almost a tenth and a half on that one lap alone. So Brody Gunter pulling out quite substantially. Yeah, Brody Gunter showing domination here tonight, which isn't too uh, unexpected from him. He's been a pretty good uh, driver so far or throughout this league in the past seasons as well as this one. So doing a great job once again to show why uh, he's been a where he's one of the ones to beat here in the ASRL. He's still got other battle trains like uh, Rene Garcia and Nate Morris that are looking to go at it with one another as Mo uh, oh Garcia stepped back and out then uh, Morris actually caught the turn four wall with the front stretch wall off of turn four. So some of these drivers deeper in the field, they're starting to struggle a little bit with this tire wear. And again, a sign potentially of impending pit stops not too far away. I think one of the problems when you have tracks like these with very different uh, turns through the turns does mean that the engineers have to make compromises on which t set of turns that they're gonna uh, set up the car around to make the car fast. But that also leads to wear and tear on those tires that the turns are not set up for very well. And we also have a 124 degree track temp, which is going to significantly impact the life of those tires. Yeah, no kidding. That's not going to be doing any favors at all. Gerald Williams on the inside of Morris picks him off. So Williams of Black Eyes puts himself up to 14th. Meanwhile, further behind, Alex Howland getting around Corey Rutherford. So Corey Rutherford starting to drop back even further. Rutherford now down 10 positions after starting up at fifth. This has been a huge fall from Grayson here this afternoon. Hayden Palumbo, the first car into pit road. Palumbo is the first one to dive down for some fuel. Um, you're pretty close to spot on for saying that 40 laps was the gonna be the marker, but uh, if he's doing 30, that's gonna throw off his routine just a little bit. So he's gonna have to make up that time a little bit later on down the track when he's uh, out there trying to stretch it out. And it looks like we got another person, Palumbo. Uh, not Palumbo. Um, Williams. Palumbo was just in front of him. Uh, Williams is pitting now and so is Brody Gunter. So your race leaders in a pit road. Here comes Billfeld, here comes Hamby. Both into the lane. Josh Mahiki gonna stay out. So looking like it's actually just shy of 40. It's even shy of 35, so about 30 to 35 laps. That's your window you're looking at. And now, big question is, how many of these drivers are gonna be opting to take tires? I'm not seeing a lot of drivers looking to take that step right now. Yeah, that's a very interesting decision. I think they have a limited set of tires in this league. So they are gonna have to be a little cautious about when they take those tires. Uh, but at the same time, it's 120 laps or 120 degrees out there for the track temperature. So um, hopefully they expect the track to get a cooler a little later on. And uh, I would almost think about taking those tires right now. So that way later on, you can have those longer tire life as the track begins to cool off. Well, sounds like you're one of the only drivers that's thinking about that one there, Josh. Right now, Hayden Palumbo, the only one that would agree with you on that one. Everybody else so far has taken fuel only on their pit stops i kind of like that idea a little bit more right if you if you know you have to take a fuel only stop at some point in this race then what i would i think it's best to take that early that way if a late caution comes out you have that extra set to play with later on yeah that's a great point as well the other thing you got to think about too is where are you going to be out in traffic if you decide to take tires versus not take tires is it going to put you a lap down if you decide to take tires now? And so is that going to cost you later? So 
so many factors go into a, a decision like that, which is why I am back here in the broadcast booth and not down there on the track making those decisions. So far, again, the only driver to take tires has been Hayden Palumbo. And I'll tell you what, this is a huge gamble. What he's gambling here is that this race is not going to have a caution in it, uh, or at least if there is one, very few. And he's hoping it's not going to happen near the end of the race. If that caution comes out near the end when he's on that fuel-only section of his stint, he is going to be screwed. And there's nothing he's going to be able to do about it. But watch as the field takes off and he's left on old tires. Yeah, you definitely don't want to be on your tire, uh, take your double stint on your tires at the end of the race. You just won't have that momentum. But uh, this is also a good time to decide if uh, this is also a good time for the race engineers to be keeping an eye out on him to see what kind of degradation these tires have over the life of the tire to decide when they're going to do the double stint or uh, when they're going to take tires. So uh, good call for the engineers to make that decision. Paul Ellison takes that advanced auto parts Alabama game Mustang into pit road and I believe that just leaves Corey Rutherford as the lone driver to make a stop although he did pit he is one of only two drivers that pitted under that safety car uh, in fact he's the only car that pitted under that uh, caution flag that uh, wasn't involved so Rutherford could go about five laps longer I think he'll be pitting by about lap 39 if not sooner yeah, if you take advantage of pitting under that caution, you definitely want to try and stretch out this caution or this green flag run as long as humanly possible. So we'll have to see if he decides to stay out for that entire stint or when he comes decides to come down. But uh, creating a lot of alternate strategies by choosing to come down, take tires, not take tires, or to stay out. You think maybe he's trying to go to split this race into quarters? Might be trying to go for 40, see if he can make it work. But uh, I would question that, right? Because he's only gotten this far because he had to pit under a caution flag. And even then, everybody else got to lap 32 or so while saving under that 3-4 lap yellow. And sure enough, he's in this time. Couldn't make it to the mark. Yeah, here he comes down pit lane. We've seen some pretty extreme... Uh, fuel saving techniques here in the green flag TV um, but I don't think I could see him pull off 40 lappers for the entire race yeah, I think it was just uh, uh, because of the situation with that pit stop early on that put him allowed him to stay out a little longer so it's going to be a little off cycle from the rest of these guys but uh, yeah just because of the fact that he's just off cycle from that first fuel stop So only a handful of drivers took tires. One of those was Hayden Palumbo, who's now out with a good head of steam. Uh, the other two drivers to do so, one of them was Casey Campbell. 15 seconds of the box. He's all the way down in 18th, though, now. As well as that Selena Thompson, who is, in, in fact, actually out of the race. So Selena Thompson becomes another driver to pull down and out of this fight. And right now, Casey Campbell is the only driver that is one lap down who's still in the running. Actually, yep. sorry, no, Joshua Rutherford is back on the race track 17 now. Oh, Joshua Rutherford back out on the track, so he may have a chance to overtake Thompson for that 19th position, but uh, got a long way ahead of him to make himself any further higher than 19th, but uh, getting that valuable track time nonetheless, and. Maybe he can sneak out a couple more bonus points. Um, I can't remember if this is one of those leagues that has bonus points for keeping it relatively clean out on the track, but uh, that may be an opportunity for him as well. Alex Howland trying to see if he can attack Corey Rutherford. Rutherford so far has, uh, he did at one point shuffle as far down as 10 positions. He didn't manage to take two of those back through that pit stop window. Right now runs 13th, eight down. But Howland and Luke Peterson trying to see if they can bump How uh, Rutherford right back to where he was before. And I'll tell you what, Corey Rutherford getting that close to the outside wall on corner exit is not helping his chances. 
No, not at all. And the number two looking down to the inside of Hall or Howland looking down to the inside of Rutherford going through the corners here, getting a nice run coming out of the corner. So he was able to overtake that position from Rutherford. And it looks like Peterson might be trying to sneak his way up in there too. So if these guys stay alongside each other, Peterson's going to be able to throw his hat in the mix. Well, before this battle gets any more exciting, we're going to take a quick chance to thank one of the big sponsors coming on board for ASRL. And as I say, that might have to come back to that thought as Howland just caught the outside wall. And there goes Corey Rutherford looking back to the inside as Rene Garcia slipping up the racetrack as well. That's going to check up Howland. And all of a sudden, Corey Rutherford actually on the move. Very lucky opportunity for Rutherford there because Garcia started to slip up and that ended up slowing up Howland and giving him the opportunity to use uh, Garcia as a pick going through those corners. So now uh, Rutherford over to be able to overtake both those positions. And now uh, it looks like Howland's looking to the inside of Garcia. Able to, he's able to take that over and it looks like Garcia is reeling a little bit. And Garcia had to make a huge lift of what going into the wall. That uh, caused this whole pack here to have to scramble. Luke Peters is going to get by him, and Alex Howland gets by all three of them. So Howland now up to 12, the highest that car has been all afternoon as they work down the front straightaway. And still double file behind. Where Rutherford clearing Peterson, and Renee Garcia goes and leads the train to being, well, dead last of it. Yeah, Garcia's reeling a little bit. I think maybe he's just deciding to back out of the uh, packs here and just keep his race going clean. So he's going to back off a little bit from those guys. Or the tire wear is starting to kick in for him, and he's getting a little uncomfortable in that car as he tries to double stint these tires. You can tell he's getting really tight going through those corners as he's beginning to slide up, especially through three and four where it's the tighter radius turn. Looks like up ahead in second position, Palumbo was able to cut down four seconds out of that gap between him and Gunter. So Palumbo's decision to take tires now has given him the opportunity to catch Gunter, but he's got to do a lot more than that because his double stint's coming up. So he's got to be able to close that gap as Gunter approaches uh, what I believe is going to be uh, lap traffic here pretty soon and then be able to uh, you know, overtake him and try and build that gap. And Brody Gunter still trying to hang on against Palumbo. Palumbo, of course, charging with that fresh rubber. Meanwhile, Howland, Peterson, Rutherford, all seeing if they can't go at it as they make these charges around through one and two. The two, the 92, and the five all in a big battle pack right here. And, oh, boy, Corey Rutherford looking like he's going to try to look to the inside of Luke Peterson and try to get some of that spot back. And he's going to look to do exactly that. So the Mullet Music Productions, number five, Camaro, trying to get to the inside of the car for Mustang. But so far, Luke Peters doing a great job on holding his own. He's doing a great job of holding that outside. And that inside line is going to be even more difficult to be used to pass as these tires are wearing out pretty quickly at this point. It's just going to want to make that car tight. And so they have to really slow up through those turns in that bottom line to make it work. And so uh, Peterson holding himself pretty tightly in that position, and uh, Corey Rutherford's going to have to find a way to make a move to uh, overtake him for sure. Up the road, Hayden Palumbo has caught Brody Gunter side by side for the race lead. And for one of the first times all day long on pace alone, Brody Gunter is going to fall to an opposing driver, Hayden Palumbo, gets through the Super Kick Revival number 11 Camaro. But again, got to remember, he's short one set of tires compared to the rest of the field for later in the race, and everybody else been field only. He's going to lap some traffic going three wide, and Gunter follows through down on the inside. That was an aggressive lunge from both of them to get around uh, the 19 of uh, Williams along with Joe Alberico. Yeah, that got really tight there. It looks like we got more three wide action coming out of the corner. Garcia backs off of there. Peterson is falling back in line too with Rutherford ahead. So that no action coming out of that as uh, they go through. 
But uh, yeah, looking back at Palumbo now, building almost a one second gap on Gunter. So going to show that maybe that is a good strategy call to take those tires early, but he really needs to build a bigger gap because like I said earlier, he's gonna have to double stint further ahead and that's gonna end up costing him. So if he can build that gap, it'll be a really good opportunity for him to possibly seal the deal and make the win. Oh boy, Corey Rutherford kicking the tail end out. A big ton there, trying to hang on against Luke Peterson. This is a big fight, but it started to develop here for that 11th spot. And these drivers started to put their cars on the absolute razor's edge right now. And it's worth noting, Joshua Rutherford in the middle of this pack here, he's 17 laps down. He is not fighting any of these drivers for position, and he's completely off cycle on his pit window as well. Yeah, Joshua Rutherford just trying to knock out as many laps as possible as he looks down to the inside of Corey. Uh, I think he's got a little bit fresher tire, so he's going to be able to pull off this move. Corey giving him a wide berth as they go through turns three and four there. Now they're headed down the front stretch. It looks like Peterson's looking to take advantage of that opportunity presented by Joshua Rutherford. Luke Peterson to the inside of Corey Rutherford. And Peterson is through. So a good show there for the Carver 92 Mustang. Driving deep in its turn numbers three and four. Luke Peterson looks like he's gonna be able to hang on. So I think now we can look to uh, take ourselves in with uh, some good old thanking of the sponsors for the SRO Next Gen Cup Series. Want to race open, but not sure if your setup is up, to, uh, is up to snuff? Want to race something made by someone who knows their stuff? Want to know why we're asking random questions in a rhyming fashion like some sort of poetry buff? Well, check out TWRsetups.com. Their setups are meticulously crafted and personally run by their top-tier drivers to assure that you got the best there is. So join the wild side of setup set shops today. Battle on for fourth. Milfeld Jr. to the inside of Tommy Cook. I like that uh, Tommy Cook paint scheme. It's got that 90s coloration to it and uh, looking really neon. I think it. Uh, I think it's going to be a great uh, paint scheme to show off those colors here tonight as Cook is able to slide into fourth position. It's a bit of a Japanese theme on that one. I actually kind of like that. It's thematic to where we're racing uh, today. Yeah, I like it. I think the uh, Japanese theme is a good is a good shout out for uh, this Motegi track. Not very often often do you see these cars race internationally, so this is a great opportunity to show that off. It's a bit of a funny coincidence, right? I mean, I mean, you don't see this track raced much at all on the surface, at least the oval layout. And all of a sudden, two leagues that we cover have gone here in as many weeks. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a very unique track, so I really appreciate when cars get the opportunity to come here. But, uh, you know, being an IndyCar fanatic myself, I do appreciate when I see the IndyCars come here. I know in the classic IndyCar series, when I used to race at this track, this was one of my favorites. Uh, this one is actually memorable for me because uh, during that race, the classic IndyCar series, when I raced there last, we actually had a real-life IndyCar driver attend that race with us. Um, so it was a very memorable track for me, but this one is a very tricky track to be able to tame. Uh, you know, Danica Patrick did it back in her day, the only track she's ever won at. So, you know, kind of iconic in its own way. It is deceptively tricky, isn't it? I mean, you take a look at this track from above, it looks so unbelievably simple, but boy, it is anything but. It, it punishes you if you mistreat it, right? And it's it does make it a really unique driving experience. And this, this is really one of those tracks that falls into one of two categories. You either love it or you hate it. Most people that I've talked to aren't big fans of this track um, in stock car racing, but there are a few that will praise it for its challenges. Yeah, I think the drastic difference between one and two and three and four is just enough that it can be really frustrating for drivers because that turn four wall with this extremely tight radius turn through three and four comes up on you so quick, it's hard to judge. 
And then that straightaway is just long enough that you're sitting there contemplating how you're going to tackle those turns going down the straight. And then you get up to it and you're kind of, uh, you know, kind of worn out from all the thinking, overthinking you've done trying to prepare yourself for the corner. It's a very physical track, too. You really have to exert yourself to drive around this place. I mean, let's ride on board here with Alex Howland in his number two machine. Oh, boy, it's actually, hello. A huge mistake from Rutherford and uh, Matt Wilkinson up the road, and that could allow Howland to go two for two here. Yeah, he got so close to be able to go two for two, but he had to take that little lower line to enter the corner, which compromised his ability to go faster there. Rutherford seceding that position, though, uh, as he got too high up on the track, and now he's going to drop actually two positions as uh, he was overtaken by Williamson there. You take a ride on board here with Corey Rutherford as he drives right to the tail end of Matt Williamson. And again, you can see this, it's a surprisingly bumpy track, right? I mean, it looks smooth, but there's a lot of bumps in this racetrack that makes it so difficult to drive. And that's part of the challenges that Matega throws up. But look at how much he, uh, Matt Williamson is having to turn his wheel to the left to keep up that speed through turns three and four. That's part of one of the big challenges. It's a very physically demanding track and that is part of what makes it such a difficult place to run at. I would agree with that. I think, uh, you know, as you progress through the season, if this is on the front end of that, you're still trying to get your feet wet with the car, understand it with all the tracks. And uh, so when you have a physically demanding track on the front end of the schedule, it makes it really hard to uh, understand these cars and have that stamina built up and the experience built up to be able to execute well here. But uh, really, we've only had one caution, so um, to, it'd be safe to say that these guys already have their feet wet with this car. And we only just now hit 100 laps to go. There is still a very long way to go before this race is fully out uh, tonight. So you can see uh, Corey Rutherford going up against Alex Howland here. This battle for that 11th spot continuing on and uh, gonna fire one down the bottom side, unable to make the move. So Alex Howland remains in line for now. Match Lawson could be coming to pit road for pit stop number two. Looks like Matt decided to go a little bit earlier than the rest of the crowd. That We'll see how that strategy plays out as he's heading down pit road. But uh, not very often do you have tracks um, uh, oval tracks that reach 40, 41, 42 second lap times. So that's what's kind of making this feel like it's going a little slower is we're not quite used to having these, you know, track times above 40 seconds. I think it's also important to note, you know, that the two tracks that are often compared to when it comes to this facility, you know, Darlington and uh, Gateway, those tracks are about a quarter mile shorter each. So it, you do shave off a lot of time in some of those other tracks. The tracks closest to these, um, and when it comes to, in terms to just the track land, you're talking tracks like Kansas, Chicagoland, uh, Kentucky, Las Vegas, all tracks that have a lot more banking on the corners and all tracks that are a lot, lot quicker than this place. Yeah, I think that's what also makes this uh, track that can be frustrating for these stock car drivers is it feels a little bit slower, so they get a little bit impatient trying to push their car through the corners. It looks like we got a, quite a few more takers coming down pit lane. Among those is your race leader, Hayden Palumbo. You mentioned drivers starting to get a little bit impatient on these corners. Are you thinking foreshadowing here with that one? <laughs> I will say I do not know what's coming up even though this is a tape delay I have not seen anything ahead but I can imagine that at some point uh, just knowing myself and my driving experience that I'm somebody's going to get a little too impatient and it's going to cause an incident I mean it happens just about every place we go to right I mean in any league you, you know eventually somebody's going to get impatient somebody's going to overdrive somebody's going to make a mistake or even just losing concentration on the on the overall picture could very well happen just the same so your race leader is in four tires and fuel looking to be the call for just about everybody Paul Ellison um, 
still is yet to come in. And Hayden Palumbo took his fuel only stop on this last pit stop window. So he is out on only fuel right now. So far, everybody else that's pitting in, they're all taking tires. I think Palumbo, he's about to lose the lead and then some. Yeah, it looks like that is going to be a problem for him for sure. Um, and now only uh, about 15 seconds ahead of uh, Brody Gunter there. So Brody Gunter is kind of that um, meter for how well that decision was to go ahead and hit those fresh tires up on first or if that was going to be a mistake by him. And uh, I think it is not going to pay off for him because he's going to have a really slow time around the track this lap or this uh, green flag stint. Casey Campbell just coming out of pit road and trying to keep uh, Brody Gunter behind. Not gonna do so. So Brody Gunter out in front and has Casey Campbell come down to pit road yet? He has not, okay. I thought Campbell had already come down to pit road. I was completely wrong on that one. So the 73 car now down and in. Well, drivers elsewhere trying to get themselves up and sorted with some good momentum runs. One of the drivers I'm surprised hasn't been further up the field, Rene Garcia, right? I mean, this is a car that we're used to seeing up in the top 10, and right now, all the way down in 18th. Down a lap, yes, but that's before Paul Ellison has come down pit road. In fact, he's two down right now. Yeah, Garcia kind of having a rough night. I just don't think this is one of the tracks that suits his driving style. I feel like the mile and a half tri ovals are kind of his uh, thing. So uh, trying to figure out this track has been a struggle for him. He's also one of those guys that I was talking about that uh, may be a little impatient with how slow this track runs. So uh, we may see him trying to push that car a little harder to try and gain some of these spots back, being a frustrated driver, um, you know, and trying to get some faster lap times down may cause him to uh, have a possible mistake. So we'll have to keep an eye on Garcia tonight. Uh, I don't wish that for him by any stretch of the imagination, but I got to imagine with him sitting in 18th right now, going for 17th, he's going to be trying to push himself a little harder to try and get a few more spots back. Paul Ellison is into pit row. The 420 Motorsports driver is down and into the pits. So Martin Pal uh, Hayden Palumbo, sorry, will retake the race lead this time by field still working itself up and around and no issues so far Garcia in a battle with Rob Williams for 17th on the racetrack right now that could turn to 16th if they can catch up to Joe Alberico on the exit of pit road meanwhile uh, Case Campbell getting around Matt Williamson yeah it looks like Brody Gunter's got a nine second gap still on Palumbo here but it's beginning to close so I imagine uh you know, sometime throughout the stint, that pass is going to have to be made, and it looks like Rutherford's pretty close behind Gunter. So uh, it's going to be a nice little interesting swap as we go three wide coming out of turn number four there. They were able to keep it clean, though. Good show there. Rene Garcia on the move. He just made up two more positions. So, oh, he's made Whoa. contact and hard into the outside wall. Got run over by Rob Williams into the corner. And that will easily bring the caution flag out for the second time tonight. I am so sorry, Renee, that I called you out for being the guy that was going to cause the caution. I promise I didn't know that ahead of time. But uh, I know with his history, he's a guy that really likes to be towards the front. And sometimes he, uh, he can be in situations where he gets a little close calls there. And unfortunately there, it did not pay off for him. Uh, got a little down onto the inside there with the guy on side of him. Nowhere to go and just caused him to spin out. You know who this doesn't help? Hayden Palumbo. Now, this is the worst case scenario for him. He is on old tires. He can't come down to get himself on cycle because he burned that set early on. Hayden Palumbo is in big trouble now. He is going to be on the back foot for at least the next 30 laps. And he's not the only one. Corey Rutherford actually just managed to come down pit road this time, but you know, we'll take a look at that incident, and uh, holy cow, what a th – this is getting wild here for the race lead. Uh, Hamby and Milford Jr. also in a pit road. So coming down the front stretch and in towards turn number one. Rene Garcia turning in. Matt Williamson didn't turn in as much as he thought, and that eventually hooks Garcia hard into the outside wall head on. 
a violent, violent impact. But no doubt, uh, probably not the last instance we're going to see this afternoon. Caution is out for the second time this afternoon. When we return, we're going to go racing once again under green flag conditions at Mobility Resort Botegi. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Welcome back to Green Flag TV. We are just about to go back to Green Flag Racing from Mobility Resort Motegi. Rene Garcia out of the race after a hard hit involving him and Matt Williamson into the outside wall in turn number one. And this puts Hayden Palum uh, Palumbo on the back foot. And, uh, well, Josh, you and I were talking about it. Uh, this could be a race ender for Palumbo, at least for his hopes on a race win. Yeah, as we were discussing, um, you know, if the caution would have happened the last pit cycle, that actually would have probably worked in his benefit because it would have gave him that natural gap close to be able to overtake them and build more of a gap later on. But because it fell in this cycle, it's really going to put him on his back foot. But the great news for us as broadcasters, it brings everybody back in and we get to see some more action out on the track. Green flag. Back in the air, we are underway once again. As the pack dives towards turn number one, Palumbo out in front with a huge jump, looking for three wide, deeper in the field as the field runs down into the open a couple of corners. They'll quickly double it out. Corey Rutherford way up the track in the background. Right now, after that mess though, there's only a handful of cars that are on the lead lap after that one. And I can tell you right now, all of that is because of when that caution came out. Yeah, it's going to create a mess for these guys as they try and get themselves resorted out to get themselves back in line to be able to fight uh, through this next cycle here. Uh, it looks like coming out, we kind of started to see the front four single file out, but Colombo's really going to have to drive defensively if he wants to keep these guys behind him. I don't think any amount of defensive driving can help when you're running on about 40 lap old tires, everybody else's tires, only five laps older. Sure enough, defending champion Josh Wahigi looking to the inside and still trying to hunt down his first win of the season to the inside of the bush light number one Camaro. And Higi should be through to the race lead off, off of four here. Yeah, Higi able to make that pass work. Cook looking to the inside of Palumbo now to take over that spot where Higi was just sitting. But it looks like Cook got a decent run coming down the front stretch. They're going into turn number one. He's got a little bit of a head of steam over uh, Cook going through the turns here. But it looks like it may be a little bit of three wide action as Milfelt was, Milfelt was kind of looking to the outside there. Decides to tuck back in, and now we're two by two by two. Palumbo pulling clear for now, but Cook, no doubt, is not going to take that line down. Milfeld, whoa, look out! Cook up the track, nearly into the 155. Here comes Gunter, three wide, down low, two rows deep on the front stretch. Ah, uh, yeah, that looked a little sketchy right there. Cook not feeling comfortable with where his car was sitting, and uh, Gunter deciding to look to the inside anyway. Able to pull that off and Gunter up, I think, two spots from where he previously was from that uh, execution right there. So now he's sitting up in third. So Gunter looking a little fast right now coming out the gate. There is a lot of really aggressive drivers in the middle of the field. There goes Hammy to the inside. He's going to lead on the door of Gerald Williams. 
and now trying to pin champ Paul Ellison as well. This is an absolute hornet's nest up here in the battle pack. Yeah, Hamby looking crazy right now, trying to keep his uh, aggression forward while he's got the guys surrounding him. So on the outside right now, defending his position from Ellison. Ellison's got a little bit of an advantage coming out of the turn here, but I gotta imagine he's gonna cut back under him here. And it looks like Ellison's gonna go down just a little bit to try and arrow block him going into turn number three, prevent him from making that move to the inside. So it looks like Hamby's gonna have to look to the outside, not gonna work for him for a pass. Way up the track, deeper in the field, Alex Howland losing out to Nate Morris. Alvarico gonna get by as well down to the inside of the racetrack. Meanwhile, everybody else in the, an absolute gaggle as they look to fight their way around through the top side. It turns one and two. Well, down the bottom side, I should say, as they're, of course, way hugging that inside line. Nobody's really taken that outside line so far. And, uh, well, I think reasons are implied. I'm impressed that Palumbo hasn't lost more so far off of this restart. Honestly, I'm on the same boat as you. I thought Palumbo would drop like a rock. He's actually doing a good job at holding his own. I think he's doing a pretty good job at defensive driving as he almost takes somebody out in that position of defense. Uh, there, the number 70 of Hamby looked to the inside as he jumped down on the track to try and block him out. Did not work, though. So Hamby looking to the inside and Ellison looking to the outside of Palumbo there to get that pass off. Trying to fend off Johnny Hamby as the advanced auto parts Mustang up on the top side, but Hamby back to the inside. Palumbo bumped off him from the top five and Hamby can he get through on Ellison? Not quite yet, still fanning out. Three wide, deeper in the pack. This is one of the most aggressive restarts we've had so far. You would think we're in a green-white checkered scenario right now with all of this. Yeah, I was just waiting for the uh, next caution to come out with all this aggressive driving, but these guys have been able to keep it green. But guys, there is, we just passed the halfway mark there last lap. So uh, don't get too uh, crazy trying to execute these passes. You still have a long way to go before the end of this race. Good grief. You saw Palumbo there pulling up from the inside line, and that got a little bit dicey as well. Drivers here are struggling so big right now, trying to keep it down on the inside. I feel like a lot of guys so far have lost a lot of that early race momentum, and that's why we're seeing so much of this aggression really picking up in the early going. Yeah, I think uh, once these guys get stretched out here, it's going to be really difficult to pass. So a lot of them are trying to knock out the positions while they have the opponents close by him. Because look how much it's starting to single file out. You're talking between first and 10th place is nearly a five second gap at this point already. So uh, you really got to take advantage of that situation while it's at hand. And these guys are definitely trying to do that right now. Corey Rutherford looking to the inside of Palumbo and looking like the number 11 will lose another one. So Hayden Palumbo drops back. Corey Rutherford will make up another spot. So put Rutherford up to ninth. I tell you what, that cost was a lifesaver for Rutherford. It has put that number five car from being at risk of losing the top 15 all the way up into ninth because of where that pit stop uh, fell for him. So this caution has been a great thing for that five. Now he can really start that recovery drive properly. Yeah, Rutherford doing a great job getting him all the way back up into ninth, holding off the inside line. Uh, the other Rutherford holding off the inside line here from Palumbo. And uh, here we go into turns number one and two. Palumbo is pretty reeling pretty hard right now from uh, having those worn tires out on the track. So he's just praying for these next handful of laps to get behind him so he can go ahead and take a pit and uh, get these tires off here. And now Luke Peters into the inside of Palumbo as well. These are cars that are a lap down. They are battling for 11th here. So Matt Williamson, Luke Peterson, and Joe Alberico all looking to get by Palumbo. And already in just, oh, what was it? We restarted, what, about 10 laps ago? Already he has dropped six and a half seconds off the leaders. We were talking. It's impressive that he hasn't lost more, but there's still a long way to go. He could be well over half a lap behind by the time the next pit stop window rolls about. 
Yeah, you're talking probably lap 90 is going to be the first opportunity to take advantage of that. So five more laps for him, and then I would be the first guy down pit lane in this ne next pit flight or uh, green flag pit stop window to try and get those tires off to get himself back in cycle with the rest of these guys and start clawing his way back up to the front and then pray for another caution to get his chance to claw his way back towards the leaders. Oh boy, Nate Morris struggled with his connection there. I've been kind of keeping an eye on that. He's been struggling with that for a while now, and it looks like it's getting worse as time moves along. So we could have, we might want to keep an eye out for that 25 in case he drops out of the session completely. Yeah, the technical difficulties can always be a uh, terrible ending for a driver's day. But just as in real life, sometimes things out of your control play factors into that. Um, but, uh, you know, the other thing that's scary, too, is for the drivers that are out there when you got somebody else racing side by side for you and they're blinking out in and out. You don't know where they're going to end up being when they come back into the track. So let's hope that those uh, technical issues are behind them and we can get back to racing. Up for the lead, Josh Mahigia has had Brody Gunter trying to reel him in for the last little while here. And I mean, this last lap by at the line, continuing on through. I mean, we talk about how all of these battles have panned out. I mean, look at how much Gunter's been reeling Josh Mahigia in. And all of this is because Gunter pitted seven laps after Josh Mahigia. He pitted just as that yellow flag was starting to come out. So he, or just shy of when the yellow flag was going to come out. He could put it well early, remember. So right now, Gunter's on the move, and he's about to take that lead back. Gunter is looking to the inside of Higgy here. He's looking really good as his tires seem to be gripping right at the right time for him as he's beginning to chase down Higgy. Higgy, not really much for him to answer right now. Well, what I would do if I were him is to drive a little defensively and make that uh, inside line there, not right at the white line, but maybe about a half a car width out to keep that door closed, but be able to use those worn tires as, uh, as a way to keep around the track fast without giving him the opportunity to pass. Gunter sending it in again. He tried it at one and two, it didn't work out. This time, Higgy slides up the racetrack and Gunter will take the race lead away, still side by side, but he should be able to secure that into turn one. So Gunter is back to the point. And Josh Vigil will have to try to bounce back from second a little while later. Yeah, Joshua, he, he got way out into the marbles there, which had to slow him up quite a bit to the point where Milfelt should be able to uh, close in on him a little bit. But he's using the draft right now, going down the back stretch, using a little bit of that uh, overspeed that you get from riding that outside line to help catch him uh, going down the stretch here. But it's only a matter of time, I think, before Milfelt's going to get his opportunity to take over Higgy as well. Less than 80 laps to go. We are well past the halfway point. And we're not too far away from the next one of pit stops either. Thinking 10 laps or less, we're gonna be seeing everybody coming back down to pit road for what will be the third for some, the fourth time tonight. This race is only continuing to pick up in its overall aggression and you could tell this is going to be a grandstand finish by the end if this is what we're in for at just the halfway mark yeah and i think with green flag stops it's going to make things interesting as well you know just a little bit of slip up in pit road can cost you a lot of time out on track so uh you know brody gunter even could have an opportunity where he slips up in the pits and ends and find ends up finding himself really I hope I don't jinx him tonight, considering I've already jinxed somebody uh, <laughs> so far this race. But uh, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, that just goes to show you how awesome green flag racing can be because, uh, you know, it can really you really have to execute throughout the entirety of a green flag stop in order to maintain your position out on the track. About three and a half seconds behind Gunter, you've got Johnny Hamby trying to fend off Paul Ellison and Tommy Cook. Ellis in particular hanging in within a quarter of a second and still trying to run down the John Deere Camaro up the road. 
So Ellison going to be having himself with a fine drive as he hightails it down into Ward's turns three and four. And Hamby could be in a good standing here if he can keep this car underneath him. Down to turn one. He's doing a good job of hanging off for that fourth place. But Paul Ellison, we've seen this time and time again. Not a driver that likes being denied. Yeah, Paul Ellison is a great driver in this league. He's got quite a few laps under his belt in the ASRL Next Gen Cup Series. So he knows how to handle himself out there on the track. And if he wants to go ahead and try and tackle that position for fourth, I think he has it in him to be able to do that. Somebody that's surprised me so far that has not come down to pit yet is Palumbo, though, because uh, the pit window has opened for the guy. You think you'd want to get off those tires as soon as possible. Well, maybe he realizes, hey, I've made my bed, may as well lay in it, trying to see if he can run that stint down. Might be trying to go for an overcut now. Try to see, well, I'm on old tires, may as well keep on it now, and just try to get these guys by having fresher tires and the rest of them on every stint from here to the end. In theory, it could work, but, I mean, 13 seconds to close in with that bit of time. It's, uh, I don't know, it's a very, very tall order. You see uh, right there, Howland, Alberico, and Morris uh, all battling it out up the road. Luke Peterson and Matt Williamson going at it as well. This battle here is big because this is for the lucky dog spot if a caution comes out. That's a great call. Uh, so far, this race has been running green, but you never know when that next caution is going to come out. So you want to definitely be battling for your position to be able to be that guy that earns the lucky dog and try and recover from that earlier lap. Uh, opportunity to be lapped so uh, great job by these two to try and keep that position ahead to get that lucky dog it's one of the closest battles on the racetrack too right now as the 92 machine closing in on the 199 Jarrah Williams into pit road though and he's taking a bunch we got pit stops kicking off Palumbo in as well Palumbo, one of the first takers, good call by him to be one of the first takers to get off of that double stint of tires here. Williams also deciding to take that as well. So from here on out, uh, Palumbo won't be struggling on old tires like he did just then. And maybe we'll see a comeback in his uh, future here. Here comes Josh Mahiki into pit road. Will Johnny Hammy come down? No. Ellison, Cook, Rutherford, Schlosser, no. All drivers not coming down so far. Luke Peterson is coming down. Oh, he's going to lose the back end. Slides back up, and that brings out yellow number three of the night. Oh, no. That's exactly what you don't want to happen when you're going through pre, uh, green flag cycles like that is to have the yellow come out from somebody not able to execute a green flag stop. That's really going to throw some shaking into the leaderboard here as those guys that, uh, you know, maybe closer to a lap down are now going to get trapped a lap down from that caution flag coming out. Right now. Oh, dear. Only seven on the lead lap right now. But that's okay because, remember, the leaders have to come down to pit road two, so they should be able to get that lap back by just staying out. Yeah, I think that that'll help those guys out quite a bit here. I don't know who's all. It looks like Luke Peterson still needed to pit, though. But So you got a couple guys washed in there that, you know, are going to be uh, – haven't pitted yet, so those guys are still going to be stuck a lap down. But uh, quite a few of these guys will be able to get their lap back here. Brody Gunter. Will look to work his way down to pit road this time by absolutely no doubts about that. And all of this just as we take the lap counter over to triple digits. Does anybody stay out? Josh Mahiki stays out. No surprise there. He's looking to take his lap back. The top seven, all drivers that are laps down into pit road. So Mahiki gets his lap back. Williamson should be getting a lap back here as well. Uh, I would expect uh, potential for Alberico, Morris, and potentially Williams, uh, both Williams and Palumbo even, to get a lap back here as well. So we should have up to 14 potentially on the lead lap here, assuming some others don't come down to pit road. Yeah, we were just talking about those two guys that were battling for that lucky dog position. So great for them to be able to knock out that battle 
because it really paid off for them right now to be able to be the guy that got the lucky dog. Well, yellow flag pit stop is still in the way. We're going to take another step back and look to get back to him. We go racing once again at Mobility Resort Motegi. Here at TWRS, we're always here to help our squad when they need a little push in the right direction. That's just who we are. We're a beautifully diverse group of goofballs dedicated to driving fake race cars as fast as possible. And we continue to push each other to the front using the power of nonsense. We have one of the strongest NASCAR programs on the service, and you can access it all for $24.99 a month. And we just released individual subscriptions for $14.99 a month for each NASCAR vehicle. We also just added a Rallycross program, and our IndyCar program is taking off as well. So come join the weird side. We have speed and cookies. Cookies are not included in some locations. Left cars getting to the final wave around as we get set to return back to green flag racing this afternoon from a bill of the resort Motegi. Josh Mahigi is uh, still going to be up there in that number nine spot. Currently, we will have 10 remaining on the lead lap. Gunter all the way down to Gerald Williams, uh, who is the first Williams on that timing sheet. The 19 Williams, uh, well, Rob Williams still one lap down along with everybody else from the caution that happened uh, about 30 laps ago. But uh, now, Gunter and Milfeld out in front. And this is where racing action could really look to kick off in earnest. Yeah, I look at uh, the likes of Paul Elson and Hamby as well. The, both those guys were kind of taking the aggressive uh, stance through that last pit cycle, and that earned them spots near or on the podium. So great job by those guys for fighting their way towards the front. Now they're getting the opportunity to fight for that last spot on the podium. And we're going to delay this start. So I think uh, the reason why not everybody caught up to the tail of the field, they wanted to make sure that that could uh, be the case. So we'll uh, hold off for that one lap and we'll look to go back this time by. Uh, we are, of course, recording this on a Monday night, just shy of the High Tide Racing League uh, broadcast at the Darlington Raceway. So I'm sure that we'll have, we will we would have had lots to say about Darlington, no doubt, with that race being the Final Four. Um, if all goes to plan, though, then tonight, uh, after this, should be the all MSRL Cup Series race when they uh, will swing on out to their first road course race of the season. That'll be taking place... Uh, uh, down at uh, Sonoma Raceway on August 6th. Should be uh, later on tonight. If you're watching this on Wednesday night, because I didn't manage to edit this in time, well, then you're going to be watching the Beer League coming on up at Brazelton, Georgia, at Road Atlanta at 9.20 p.m. Eastern Time with the uh, Speed Cup Series still making their regular return to Thursday night racing this time by for yet another round. It'll be race four from the action track. The Richard Raceway plays host to round number four. All that and a lot more still coming up on Green Flag TV. Base car should be down and in. We're ready to go. Back to Green Flag Racing. Another Green Flag underway here. Lap 104 of 160. So just a handful of laps to go. Uh, one more pit stop likely uh, for the rest of this race here. So this is kind of shaping up to be the final run of this, uh, of this track. Brody Gunter getting out in front. Mill felt second. Hamby, uh, well, was looking to be in third. But the battle will be on for the last podium spot. Driving it in deep in a turn number three. Mill felt holding on though around the outside and should look to actually fend him off for that final uh, spot. And how about that? He's going to get it done. Mill felt hangs on to second. 
Mill felt able to hang off, to hang on to second there with Hamby in third, but Ellison really close behind and Slosher, right? Slosher and Cook also looking to get in that third spot of the podium as well. So expect to see those guys make their way, crawl their way up to that third position here. But uh, Gunter is uh, starting to take off from second place here. Millfelt actually looks like that gap has begun to stabilize there, but uh, we're beginning to see these uh, top five cars, top six cars here begin to stretch out a little bit. Schlosser and Ellison side by side as they dive into the turn numbers one and two. The number 400 uh, car going to hang on. Meanwhile, Ellison around the outside of the very thematic machine of Tommy Cook. And the turn 200 racing machine is going to be able to power through and he'll hang on to six, but he is definitely looking to see if he can't gun it to a top five. Yeah, Ellison sandwiched between the triple digit cars of Slosher and Cook. Uh, able to single file it out at this point, though, you're beginning to see them find their little groove on the track and be able to hold that off. Sticking down closer to the white line is probably the best call for Ellison there to fend off that position from Cook. Joao Barrico losing a spot to Nate Morris. As Morris goes through into 13th, both these drivers still down on where they qualified today and trying to see if they can't improve. So far, the biggest improver on the day has been Rob Williams. He is plus eight on the day. Unfortunately, that's about as high as he can go unless he can get another yellow flag for the end of this race. Uh, Gerald Williams also plus eight on the day. He is up to ninth and still with a lot of up for momentum for him to go to as well. One of the big losers, though, Hayden Palumbo, the driver that did end up pulling down and into pit road and has put himself out of racing contention this afternoon. So a big shame for Palumbo. We'll hopefully be seeing him out when uh, the ASRL Next Gen Cup Series will make their return. Back to Green Flag TV this coming Sunday. For what uh, could be a wild one, around the Brickyard, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Oh, sorry, I'm ahead of myself at the Rockingham Speedway. Boy, it's been a while since we've had a race at the Rock, and that should be a good one. I remember the last race at the Rock was a pretty epic battle, so oh, yeah. looking forward to seeing how this one goes uh, with those guys as well. And uh, yeah, quite an iconic track, and I'm glad that they were able to bring it back into the iRacing service to allow us to continue to race there. As it looks like the 99 of Higgy is on the inside there, the 92 of Peterson. Is he able to get around him coming out of this corner? I think he might be able to pull that off. And Joshua Higgy trying to get around a good bit of lap traffic. He was one of those drivers that had to line up at the very tail of this field because he got the wave around under caution in order to put himself uh, behind the leaders. So he just got by Alex Howland. The first driver actual position is Corey Rutherford, who is still quite a few cars up the road. Yeah, that's going to be uh, quite the gap to try and tackle for Rutherford to make his way back, or uh, Higgy rather, to make his way back towards the front of the field. He's got a five second gap at this point, and I imagine that it's going to be really tough to close that gap unless there's a caution that pops out. So he'll be praying for a caution coming up as it looks like uh, Rutherford's dive back into turns one and two. One battle that is going on in this battle pack is between Luke Peterson and Rob Williams. Again, the battle for the lucky dog spot if we do get another yellow flag, which I mean, we had two in the last 40 laps or so. So there's still absolutely a big possibility we'll get one. Uh, Luke Peterson just hoping it's not him again. He brought out the last one when he botched a pit entry attempt. And you still see the tire treads left behind on the front straightaway there. But Luke Peterson right now fighting to the inside of Alex Howland. Luke Peterson looking to the inside of Howland here. He's got a tough task ahead of him to get around him, but I think he might be able to pull it off if he can keep it steady down low there. It seems to be that's the preferred passing line tonight. So if you can get that inside line on the other guy, it's just a matter of time before you're able to pull execute that pass. As he enters turn number three here, gets a little bit of tight, so he to let off there but he might be able to pull that off coming out of the corner here. Yep, he's got enough gap there that he's able to pull off in front of them. Did Howland catch the wall there coming off of uh, 
turn number four, he lost a lot of momentum. I don't see damage on the uh, right side of that car, but I've been wrong before. Yeah, he definitely had at least a loose moment there, enough that he had to let off the gas. Uh, that tiny little mistake was enough for the 24 car to be able to look down to the inside of him and get around him there, but I don't think the 24 has quite enough speed to keep him behind him for too much longer. So we might see the number two once again looking to try and overtake that position from him. And of course, he still got Schlosser, Ellison, Cook running fourth, fifth, and sixth just behind as these battles continue on. The Interstellar SRV machine still hanging on against the Alabama Gang's number 55. And then, of course, Tommy Cook still seeing if he can't battle his way to a top five finish this afternoon. That'd be big points. For Tommy Cook. I know last season was quite up and down for him, but he's hoping for better. And oh boy. Well, it looks like our race leader's had a moment, and that has caused our timing tower to go a little bit funky there for a while, but that has just sorted itself out. Yeah, Tommy Cook having a pretty good season so far, sitting second in the point standings. I think he will appreciate the points haul again tonight. Ellison. Also looking him up here, he's sitting in ninth after a six point jump from the first race of the season. So tied for ninth right now. Ellison looking to have a good points haul tonight. Uh, that'll bump him up another few positions since we're only a couple races in. But uh, Tommy Cook is definitely sitting pretty with a finish like this. Okay, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention match loss, right? Up 13 positions at the points. Now, yes, only race two, so of course, you're going to get big point swings like that. But I think that point jump for him is warranted. He had a horrid time at uh, the iRacing Super Speedway. Found himself uh, down and effectively out early on. He, fin uh, he finished that race only, s well, tied for 16th at the points. It was a bad run for him at the season opener. Comes into race two and leads every single lap of the main event of the Southern National Motorsports Park to win the race in a dominated fashion that we have never seen in ASRL before. So this is definitely a driver to keep an eye on if he can get himself with some good runs. And right now, fourth place, not a bad run at all. Yeah, I think he's uh, due for another good run here. Maybe those Gen 4 Cup cars when he heads over to the High Tide Racing League gives him a little bit of experience to be able to handle these next gen cars out here tonight. So Slosher also having a good run to put him third in the points up to last race. And uh, another good finish for him here tonight is going to really help solidify his top five position there as he, he gets really close to the wall coming out of four. You talk about, uh, you, you talk about uh, Matt Schlosser having some of that experience of the Gen 4 Cup Series from uh, Monday nights. They did race at Rockingham earlier this year. So he does have a little bit of for, uh, forward knowledge going into that place with an incredibly tough beast to tame uh, about how that track is going to be able to drive as well. Rockingham is, as you mentioned, such an iconic track. And I'm so excited that we're going to get to go there this coming Sunday as well. Now, my big thing is how is it going to race in the modern age? Because are, are they, aren't they they trying to bring that track back? They're trying to revive it for actual racing again? Yeah, I think it was that or North Wilkesboro or maybe both that they're trying to. Well, North uh, Wilkesboro bring has some been successful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, trying to revitalize those two tracks, uh, it's going to make for some interesting racing. I think they are due for, definitely due for a repave because these cars have very, very low ground effects. We've seen at places like Phoenix where uh, even just the transition down that dog leg is enough to upset these cars. So they're really gonna have to smooth out that track if they're gonna have success with these cars at Rockingham. So kind of looking this up here, uh, courtesy of the Charlotte Observer for this one, uh, they did do a full repave of the one mile oval back in December of 2022. Um, you don't do that unless you're intending to bring cars back to go racing at a racetrack, right? So uh, construction still ongoing. That was as recent as July 15th of this year, so only about three weeks ago. Um, but there is progress being made there. That would be such an epic track 
to see back on the schedule. Can you imagine the race that we'd be seeing there in the real world if we do manage to get back there someday? Johnny Hamby, meanwhile, up to second against Milfeld. Johnny Hamby up to second, which is going to be a great run for him. He's sitting first in the point standings after two races, so doing a great job so far this year to keep himself towards the front of that season standings, and this is going to help him out towards that. Uh, it'll give him a little more wiggle room if it's a track like Rockingham that may be a struggle for him. But, uh, yeah, it's great to be sitting at the top of the leaderboard going even into race number three because that gives you the confidence you need throughout the rest of the season to be able to uh, fight for that championship. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what uh, race at Rockingham is going to look like. It's going to be especially interesting to see what it's going to look like here for the next gen cup series on the old track layout and see if those that bumpy track is really going to throw uh you know some wrenches into these guys's driving style so racing action continuing on still from uh racing here this afternoon for the american sim racing lead there you see match loss of trying to take a move down the inside of paul ellis and uh, in towards turns one and two, the 55. Oh boy, pitching in Schlosser big time coming off of turn number two. That was such a tight moment. And now look at Tommy Cook trying to pitch Schlosser and not willing to give him any room down the back stretch. Schlosser really having to earn his place there at the top four. I know Ellison's one of those guys that loves to uh, make it difficult for people to get around him, really good at defending his position. And does it once again there. Cook also doing the same, causing Slosher to back up just a little bit. Uh, we'll have to see if he can recover from that drive and get his opportunity to take those positions back. But so far, just tucking in as we still have about 35 laps to go here in this race. So Johnny Hamby and Mick Milfeld Jr. going uh, nose to tail for the number two spot still and under 40 laps to go. One more pit stop is left for these guys. The question is now, can they stretch it to the point where they can go to the end? They would need to get what, within 32 to go or so? So they need to get themselves, I would say within the next, if they can get themselves another four laps on this run, they should be good to go to the end. Yeah, and I think it comes back to that discussion you and I had earlier about trying to stretch that out as long as possible so that way they have the freshest tires toward the end of the race. So I think we're really going to see a lot of these guys stick it out as long as they possibly can. And then we're going to see a lot of guys dumping down towards pit lane right there towards the end of this green flag stint. So that pit window, we're going to come up right against the end of it, and a lot of guys going to be diving down at the same time. Uh, 35 laps left to go they need to get to within 32 to go and they should be good on this one right, well I mean I don't even know about that one I mean taking a look at this yeah, I, I don't I wouldn't even trust 32 I'd say maybe 28 or so the point is it's a long way to go and this could very quickly turn into a fuel mileage race just like we saw at speed when we went uh, racing there a few weeks ago. Yeah, it's going to be a very interesting uh, finish to these green flag cycles here. And uh, Brody Gunter kind of riding off into the sunset. So he'll be kind of the guy dictating when these green flag stops are going to happen. But as barring a perfect execute or lack of a perfect execution in the pit stops this is kind of his race to lose going into the final stint of this race. He's just put on a dominating performance. So I think the next couple guys that we're going to be keeping an eye out on for the podium is going to be Hamby and Milfelt as they continue to battle for the second and third spot. Oh boy, Milfeld nearly into the outside wall again, coming off of turn number two. But that John Deere Camaro has been doing rounds so far. Again, plus eight on the day, the most spots gained, uh, well, tied on that with Gerald Williams. 
And now a battle going on further down the field. Three-way fight for six. Higgy, Schlosser, Rutherford all under a blanket. These three duking it out. Rutherford beginning to peek to the inside there. Uh, still kind of peeking his way inside. They're getting right up alongside the back bumper, but not able to pull that off throughout the entirety of the corner. So backed off just a little bit. But uh, going down this back stretch continues to seem like he's single filed here. Maybe if there's going to be a mistake by Higgy up the street, this will give the opportunity for those guys to take it three wide once again. Higgy looking, or uh, Rutherford kind of looking out to the inside once again, but not able to pull that off. So took him back in line. I think we might see another opportunity for him to try and poke his nose to the inside. Thirty laps to go at the line, right on the cusp of being able to make it to the end. But I think drivers should be good if they can get just another lap or two out. They won't have to worry about it anymore. On well, the top three, at least, sure aren't coming down pit road. Alberico going down the inside of Rob Williams for 12 in a turn three, but Williams powering back around the outside. Yeah, Alberico getting pretty tight there. He had to back off a little bit, not to run into his competitor. Now he's sitting pretty low and able to pull off that pass coming out of the corner. Jarrah Williams, the first driver to blink, comes down into pit road just after 30 laps to go, Mark. Now, he is still on the lead lap as well, so he could be one of those that is very much at risk of not being able to go the distance this afternoon. Paul Ellison into pit road. Tommy Cook into pit road. 29 laps on the docket. This is right on the fine line of being able to make it. I think they should be good, but it's going to be close. It's going to be close for these guys, but uh, I think they have planned this out enough. And like I was saying, the thing that I would have done as an engineer in this situation is try and keep out there as long as possible. Who knows, maybe that was the longest they could possibly go, but you do want the fresher tires at the end to give that advantage to yourself over your opponents. Johnny Hamby, Mick Milfell Jr. in the pit road. Tommy Cook stays out. Cook could go another lap. He's going to stay out of that. So we know Cook is good to go to the end of this race. Paul Ellison should be good to go to the end. Everybody that's coming down pit road right now should be good to go to the end of the race. There's a few that I'm concerned about. One of those is Higgy. One of those is Ellison. Uh, Jarrah Williams, Matt Williamson, Luke Peterson. I'm all not certain they're going to be able to go the distance at the end. But if you pit at this point, you're good to go. No need to worry. Yeah, and maybe they're expecting a, another caution to come towards the end of the race here, which would give them an advantage to be able to save that fuel one last time. But you're only talking one or two laps, so if they're really uh, conscious of their fuel mileage there, they can just do some lift and coast. Uh, this is a great track to get away with some lift and coast efforts to make yourself available to uh, stretch the fuel to the end. Now, if I'm these drivers, I'm a bit concerned about a caution coming out because so far, every yellow fly tonight, bar the very first one that came out on lap two, right around when green fly pit stops are taking place. So uh, if the trend continues that way, I'd be a little bit concerned, especially when you come out and notice the tail like this without Briga Williams and Moores with almost nothing between them off the pits. Yeah, very sketchy moment for those guys coming out the pits. And that's oh. uh, 25 sticks. His nose where it probably didn't belong, but able to poke his car down inside there and now is alongside to try and overtake that pass as he goes down the front stretch. So we got these two guys duking it out for position. Williams and Morris uh, going once again. Morris uh, able to overtake that position going through turn one and two. And now he's going to try and uh, look up Alberico to gain that next position. That move that Morris made, that's sometimes what we call plain chicken, right? That's when you stuff something in and you are expecting for the driver above you to give you the room to get it done. I think Williamson would have been more with all within his right there to turn in on Alberico with the assumption that, hey, he's not going to try to throw it into a gap that narrow. But uh, Morris made the move and basically made that move, uh, pulling the Senna almost, right? Saying, 
either we're going to wreck this time or you're going to make room for me. And Williams decided to make room for him. Yeah, that's so true. I'm glad that they decided to do that because we were in the midst of a pit, uh, green flag cycle there. And, you know, that's the kind of stuff that happens in these green flag cycles. You get the traffic bunched up together once again as they try and go down and pit all together, which can lead to issues coming out of the pits. Uh, so far, uh -oh. we're keeping it green, though. Uh, Corey Rutherford back down to pit road. And that's a drive through penalty. So the Mullet Music Productions, number five, Camaro with a drive through penalty on that deal. And that is devastating for the five. That uh, That's close to trapping him a lap down. It might trap him a lap down. He's racing with Brody Gunter to stay on the lead lap. It comes off pit road. He's not going to hang on to it. No, that's devastating, especially with only 24 laps to go here in the race. That just uh, is not the mistake you need to be making the, towards the end of this race, but uh, just barely going a lap down at this point. He may be able to, since he's got a, well, I don't know, he might not have fresher tires, but um, he can, if he can keep close to Gunter here, maybe unlap himself uh, if there's a caution or, uh, you know, he'll be the first lucky dog. So not too far back, but it's definitely a mistake you don't want to make this late in the race. Josh Mahiki trying to attack Paul Ellison as well as they drive it in deep into turn numbers one and two. I, I feel a little bit bad. I mean, I, I just realized we completely forgot about the halfway stage uh, that was new to this season. That's still something new. We're still getting used to that. Um, but but at the halfway point, Josh Mahiki, the driver, you currently see lunging inside of Ellison and actually going to get into the door of him. So Mahiki pushing Ellison up the track, battling his way to fourth. But that car, making that aggressive lunge, did take the stage one win alongside Michael Milfeld Jr. Uh, Brody Gunter was third, Willie, uh, Gerald Williams was fourth, Paul Ellison was in fifth, Johnny Hamby sixth, Hayden Palumbo finished in seventh, Tommy Cook eighth, Batch Lawson ninth, and Corey Rutherford rounded out the top 10. So the top 10 score points, but it's not the 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 format that you know we're used to in the Cup Series, right? It's 15 for the stage win and 12 for second, 10 for third, and then seven for fourth, one down all the way to 10. That gets one point. So we completely forgot about that stage, but now we're 21 laps from the end. We finally managed to get the chance to talk about it. There was so much going on on the track at that point on the racetrack. I'm not surprised we forgot about it. Yeah, that's a great call that uh, they have the stage point wins. Those are pretty detrimental to the standings at the end of the day. So great job by Ihiki to earn that and uh, give himself those much needed points to try and claw his way towards the top of the standings for the season so far. I think that'll be very beneficial as uh, we approach the end of this race to help out his season standings. So far the closest battle on the racetrack with 20 to go is going to be Higi and Ellison. Looking to see which one of these drivers will be able to go at it as they make that run down the back stretch and in towards uh, turn numbers three and four. The only battle within a second right now, Luke Peterson back into pit road again. So Luke Peterson into pit road for another time. And I wonder if maybe he didn't have enough fuel to make it to the end. He was one of those drivers we were a touch concerned with. And I wonder what this might mean for drivers like Alex Howland and Gerald Williams that could be in the same boat. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, he came down kind of early if he was trying to stretch that fuel out. He must have just had to bail on that strategy because uh, usually even if you're trying to stretch the fuel mileage out, you don't come in at the front end of that. You try and come out at the back end of it. Uh, I mean, there's multiple ways you can look at that strategy if you wanted to go that route. But I think a lot of people tend to shy on the side of, well, I have 19 laps left to try and lift and coast, try and stretch that fuel run a little bit more. He's probably deciding, well, if I come in here, get the fresher tires, I have 19 laps to try and catch my competition before the end of this race. All the while, Joshua Higgy starting to pull away from Paul Ellison as well. I'm starting to think the running order we got on the racetrack, that's about the order we're going to be left with at the end of this thing. I'm not seeing too much in the way that's going to be looking to disrupt things unless somebody botches another entry into pit road in these final 20 laps, which I would put serious doubt on. 
Nobody really close right now in the racetrack. Everybody very much just minding their own business, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, making sure they're there to fight this race through at the end. For Gunter, it's his race to lose. Yeah, Gunter putting on a dominating performance all night tonight. I think that, you know, the only person that kind of gave him the run for his money was Palumbo, but that was because of the strategy call. And unfortunately, that strategy call did not play out in Palumbo's favor, which handed the uh, lead back to Gunter. And so he's just been dominating all night tonight as again, he's got another five second lead. That's kind of where we saw him at the beginning of this race before Palumbo did his alternate strategy. Um, so Gunter just uh, really liking this track tonight. For good reason. He is uh, absolutely on a tear right now in front and he is showing no signs of stopping anytime soon. For this one, it is a good try for him. And uh, this one, looking like it's going to go all his way. Brody Gunter establishing himself as a big threat for the title here early on in the season. He has had a great uh, start so far. He uh, won the race, don't forget. Uh, he's looking on track to win his first race of the season at the very least, but right, I mean, he's got to the top 10 before, so he is a driver that can be very consistent. He was very consistent all throughout last season. He is not a driver that I think we should be discounting at any point throughout the course of the championship. No, Brody Gunter is uh, very good at driving around here. I believe last week at Southern National, he ended up not finishing that race, which was not a, a great finish for him. Usually he's one of those guys that finishes closer to the top 10, top five uh, realm. So that incident uh, that happened to him last week was a little bit of a setback, but he's right back on track this week to have a great finish once again and it will give him a huge jump in the season standings as currently he's sitting in 11th. Well, and last season, he didn't run all of the races either. But, I mean, you look at the stats of the races, he did race in, right? He won the race at Las Vegas after starting 11th. He finished second an additional five times. One of those he started on pole with, and the others he started on row number two. He finished at the top 10 twice more in terms of that and uh i mean that that's more than a 50 percent top 10 rate on the races he ran all throughout the course of the season he is absolutely a driver that could be a massive threat for this overall championship if he could just keep that consistency up and keep his attendance rate up as well yeah i like him to another driver in the high tide racing league nick nickerson another part-time driver that when he shows up is dominant in his performances but uh, Full-time attendance is, can be a tough thing in these leagues, so um, we'll have to see if Brody Gunter can give himself more to this season and be able to put himself in contention for the championship. But I do agree with you that even last season, you know, he wasn't there full-time, but, man, when he showed up, he showed up every week. And uh, so I think here again he's going to be putting himself into a position to uh, show up well every week and maybe get himself a little closer to the top. Johnny Hamm has been losing a good bit to Mick Milfeld Jr. over the last little while, and now he is under fire for that uh, next position on the racetrack. You take a look at the uh, lap times that time by, and it is not uh, not promising to be putting him mildly on that deal. So he is going to have an absolute time of it. Milfeld Jr. could be in a big battle here with Hamby for the number two spot all the way to the end of this race. Yeah, we'll have to see if Hamby can hold him off just 11 laps longer, but Milfelt looking really good right now to be able to close that gap after having a uh, nice little gap built, giving him a nice little comfortable uh, cushion there to make a mistake, but now he's really got to uh, hunker down here, try and keep that defensive line going on to keep Milfelt, or Milfelt behind him. Milfeld Jr., of course, making his uh, rookie uh, debut in the ASRL Next Gen Cup Series this afternoon. Well, not this afternoon, but this season. He was trying to see if he can't get himself in with a good uh, run. Uh, same story for uh, Hamby, right? I mean, these are two drivers that have 
never raced before in this championship, and they're trying to see if they can get it, uh, themselves with an in on that one. Hamby did get a race win in the preseason race at Charlotte Motor Speedway, but was not able to take a full race win yet in this series. He is still podiumless in that run as well, trying to see if he can't put himself finally onto the podium. And for Milfeld, he's only finished one race in the top 10, the other all the way down in 17th. So both drivers in desperate need of good finishes, especially since uh, Hamby took the points lead out of Southern National Motorsports Park just last week. Yeah, Hamby doing great right now to lock himself into the lead and this second place finish is really going to help solidify that position up at the top of the leaderboard. Mill felt looking really good tonight despite, uh, you know, the other race having issues with there. Um, so you kind of want this early momentum coming out the gate. So I think Hamby is really setting himself up for success as he begins to build this gap over his opponents on the leaderboard finishing second here that that kind of early uh season momentum is just so great to help carry you through those harder tracks that you begin to struggle with or get those that mid-season like down feeling as you you know can run into races where you begin to struggle so a uh, great job by hamby to get himself that kind of gap built up between him and his opponents to give him that run going on later in the season under 10 laps to go. What do you think? I mean, Milfeld Jr. has been dragging to the back end of him for the last little while, but it's another thing altogether to actually pass at a track like this, and that momentum has stalled ever since he caught him. Yeah, I think you nailed, the head, nailed it right on the head there. The momentum stalled when he caught him. It really defend, depends how well uh, Hamby can defend this position. The closer he can stay down to that apron to prevent mill felt from being able to do that or cut underneath him because once he takes that inside line which he may get away with her no not quite close enough there but what mill felt can do is kind of uh undercut or do the over under on him uh coming through here turns three and four this is a good time to try and pull that off he wasn't able to pull it off there but the strategy in an over under is you kind of ride that outside line going through those corners there. And then when you exit that corner, you dive down there in the last second and try to take that inside. So we're going to see him here, maybe in turn two, try and dive lower to get that over under pulled off. Nope, he's going to stick along backside here. We'll have to see if he does that here in three and four. A caution now would put us into overtime at the Mobility Resort Motegi. Here we go, Milfelt to the inside of Hamby, trying to go for the move right as they catch lap traffic in the form of Casey Campbell. Four laps to go in Japan, and looking like Milfelt could be able to use Campbell here as a pick to take second place away. He's got it. There we go. That's another strategy that I didn't even think about could have been a possibility for Milfelt there is to use the lap traffic as the pick. So great timing for Milfelt. He He's saw in the wall though. From many laps away. Oh yeah, so he got a little bit into the wall going down to two there. That gives Hamby the opportunity to dive back down to the inside. We'll see if he can pull off that pass going through three and four. Coming to three laps to go up the road. Brody Gunter clear by six seconds. Hamby now can smell blood in the water. Milfeld making a critical error. He's able to recover from it though. Keeps the momentum going and he doesn't let Hamby get an in. Now, can he drive away or will he make that mistake again? Give me Hamby the chance he needs to pounce. Yeah, I think Hamby's a really strong driver here today, so I can see him being able to pull that off, but he's only got three laps to do so, and uh, I'm sure he's going to be regretting not taking advantage of that mistake by Milfelt bumping into the wall coming out of two. Was that smoke I just saw entering pit lane? Uh, it may have been, it was Alex Howland having a slide on the front straightaway, nearly going around, but he didn't come to pit row. May have just got a snap of oversteer, but uh, he'll keep himself on the racetrack with nothing to worry about for now. Yeah, I thought for sure we we're going to get a caution there and go into overtime, but nice job by him to keep that green flag running as we got two to go here. Milfelt. Kind of building a gap on Hamby there. So I think Milfelt's locked himself into second position after that really nice move to overtake Hamby. Brody Gunter, meanwhile, 
driving away with this race all the way down into turn numbers one and two, working to the back straight away. For Brody Gunter, he has led much of this race. He started on pole, lost it early, but was able to take it back. He'll drive this one down in towards turn numbers three and four. Brody Gunter off of the final corner. He will take the race win this afternoon from Mobility Resort Motegi. Brody Gunter with an epic performance tonight, just dominating performance over his opponents. Like I said, the only person that even gave him a run for his money was Palumbo, who found himself in a bad situation with that double stint of tires. So Gunter leading the charge tonight, once again, showing everybody how dominant he can be in this car. The Florida native has proven time and time again he is worthy of being on uh, in victory lane with so many strong drives, and he'll do it again this afternoon, taking only his uh, second win of his ASRL career. What a drive for Brody Gunter as he will be able to take that one to the front straight away and burn it down in front of Japan. What a drive for Brody Gunter as he will be able to no doubt improve his standing big time in the points. Yeah, Brody Gunter just did a great job tonight and looking at the rest of the field those guys really had a tough time ahead of them to try and track him down. Uh, Milfelt and Johnny both five to six seconds behind him. So it was definitely his race to lose tonight, and he executed in perfect fashion. Well, with all of that said and done, we can take a rundown of your official post-race results here at the end of the night after what was a wild race this afternoon from Mobility Resort Motegi. Taking a rundown on... Uh, those results this time by what a wild drive it was here uh, this afternoon. Uh, it doesn't look like we'll be able to get the full results up on screen, but uh, I can tell you right now, Brody Gunter took the race win by six seconds over Johnny Hamby, who finished on the podium. Josh Hickey was in fourth with Paul Ellison in fifth. Tommy Cook brought it home in the number six spot. And then, of course, uh, you had none other than Max Lawson in seventh, Jared Williams in eighth, Matt Williams in ninth, Corey Rutherford rounded out the top ten. Nate Morris finished this race one lap down along with Rob Williams. Luke Peterson was 12th, Case Campbell 13th, Al Barico 14th uh, with Howland, Rutherford, Palumbo, Garcia, Thompson, and George rounding out the field. Tough break for quite a few drivers that were looking for a strong drive this afternoon. Most notably among those, Hayden Palumbo, a driver that was so influential early on and just got caught out on a very mistimed caution for him. But uh, I, I tell you what, we look forward to the races coming up and Rockingham Speedway one week from now, going to be a wild one here, Josh. Yeah, the ASRL Next Gen Cup Series always puts on great performances, and this was uh, no exception to that rule. These guys did a great job out here today to go to such a unique track that doesn't get raced that very often and to perform the way they did uh, just shows a testament to how skilled these drivers are. So I'm really thinking that Rockingham is just going to be another one of those situations where these guys are going to be able to show off their skills and maybe we'll see another new winner coming out of Rockingham. That's all the time we're going to have for one afternoon. What a wild race from Mobility Resort Motegi. When we return, it'll be at the Rockingham Speedway. Don't forget to check out the OMSRL Cup Series. should be going live right about now tonight. Or if you're watching this on Wednesday, well, then you can tune into a couple hours or so for the Beer League when they go racing. And then, of course, we'll see you same time as always on Thursday nights when the Speed Cup Series takes it out uh, to, the, uh, to the action track down at the Richmond Raceway. If you want to find out more about who we are and what we can offer you, then you can check us out at www.greenflagtv.com. My name has been Nolan Rempel alongside Josh Baird. We want to thank you once again for taking all the time to join us here on this beautiful uh, evening here this afternoon. We'll see you when we go racing in just a few days at The Rock.